the government of St. Lucia continues to manage the existing threat of COVID-19 with the passing of the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act. Let's take some time to break down the elements of the Act so we can all play our part. The COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act is about public safety, public order, and public health. Section 1. Administration St. Lucia's success was based on several things, one of them being the swift and strategic response to manage COVID-19 earlier this year, and part of that was the establishment of a command center. The Act establishes the command center as an advisory body to Cabinet on matters relating to COVID-19 and have oversight on activities required to reduce or prevent the spread of COVID-19. The Act outlines the composition of the command center and its functions. The command center includes a Minister of Cabinet as chairperson, the CMO as deputy chairperson, a representative from the Office of the Prime Minister, and the permanent secretaries of the Ministries of Tourism, Health and Finance, the Commissioner of Police and a NEMO representative. The Act also states that the chairperson or deputy may call upon a person to attend a meeting of the command center to deal with particular matters or to assist or advise the command center. This includes civil society and the private sector. Section 2 COVID-19 Protocols By now, each and every one of us have been subjected to a temperature check upon entry at some establishment. Plus, we know that a mask must be worn in public. Section 2 of the bill deals specifically with these protocols, its enforcement, monitoring the compliance of establishments and reporting. It ensures that persons and establishments adhere or uphold protocols. Protocols continue to be the country's greatest combatant against the spreading of COVID-19. The bill enforces protocol and encourages consistency and compliance from everyone. Section 3 COVID-19 Certification As the country continues to manage and readjust to the new normal of coexisting with COVID-19, the government of St. Lucia made moves to, through a phased approach, reopen certain sectors like travel and tourism. Section 3 of the Act deals with the services like Airbnbs, hotels, and shops. It states, A person shall not operate a tourism service unless the person obtains a valid COVID-19 compliance certificate under this Act. Due to the majority of St. Lucia's cases being imported, it was prudent to create legislation to enforce protocols within the tourism sector to protect staff, locals, and tourists, thus the issuing of a compliance certificate. Under this section, it outlines the way in which one can apply for a certificate, inspection, the issuance, the mandatory display of the certificate, and terms for revocation. Section 4. Travel Requirements Since our greatest threat remains ever-present as we endeavor to keep our borders and businesses open, the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act establishes and highlights the strict requirements for persons who want to come to St. Lucia. This is why, to come to St. Lucia means you must go through several processes. Testing and quarantining is mandatory. Under this section of the bill, it outlines requirements for pre-travel, home or government-based quarantine and what would happen if one were to get a positive test or a negative test. The section also outlines the isolation or detention of persons should the CMO have reasonable grounds to believe that a person is or may be infected or contaminated with COVID-19 in order to protect the wider public. Section 5. Electronic Monitoring Section 5 addresses the introduction of an electronic monitoring device which shall be administered by the Ministry of Health for the purpose of monitoring. Monitoring whether a person has, during his or her quarantine, left his or her home, or whether a person who has during quarantine at a place approved by the CMO left the place of accommodation. This is a relatively new aspect to St. Lucia's COVID-19 national response and comes as a direct response to breaches in home and government facility quarantine. This section governs the use of the electronic monitoring device for the user and authorities and states breaches or tampering will be an offense. Section 6. Collection of Health Information We know that COVID-19 poses a major threat to persons who have underlying health issues. Therefore, the collection of health information from persons interested in traveling to St. Lucia is important for deciding what type of quarantine they would be required to go through 
and if one should test positive, the collection of health information will help health authorities at administering the right care to patients. Section 6 deals specifically with the medical aspect of St. Lucia's response. It speaks to the use of information, the duty of authorities to protect the information, and the duty to destroy information once it is no longer required. Section 7. Mestalanias Section 7 vests power in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to enforce the law to stop, detain, and arrest persons who contravene sections of the bill. The general penalty is a fine not exceeding $1,000 or imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months. This COVID-19 legislation is a direct reflection of the best practices to keep COVID-19 under control. The passing of this law means the move to secure St. Lucia's success, provide parameters within which authorities work, and clearly outline procedures and requirements for citizens, business owners, tourists and tourism-based entrepreneurs to move forward in this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We hope this helped you better understand the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Act. The act is available to be read or downloaded at covidresponse.lc.